All right, welcome to this introduction to geospatial data. Um, we're gonna, this is the first um, video and what I'm planning to do is a course in the GeoPandas library in Python and many of the associated libraries with that. So this is a short sort of non-practical quick introduction to geospatial data. So what is geospatial data? That's the key question before we, we begin this. It's data that describes features and objects on the Earth's surface. And, you know, it's not constrained to Earth. You can do spatial analysis on any body. Uh, it could be a, another planet, it could be the moon, it could be a, any satellite or anything. But 99% of the time when you're doing spatial analytics, you're going to be using things that exist on the Earth, on the Earth's surface. Um, so there's two core types of data involved in geospatial data. We have vector data, and that's comprised of vertices and paths. Vertices are like points. Paths or edges um, are, are just lines that sort of connect one point to another. Um, and mathematically that forms a graph um, where you have multiple nodes or points connected by lines, which are called edges in the graph notation, or the graph terminology rather. And vector data has three basic data types. We have the point which is representing just a single point on the graph we have a line which represents a sequence of points essentially one point connected to another connected to another etc etc and we have a polygon which is a bounded sort of area um, which we're going to come to in the next slide we're going to go into a little bit more detail vector data is based on coordinate systems and um, there are many different types of coordinate reference systems um, out there and a key problem in geospatial analysis is what happens if you have two data sets that represent things that you're interested in. How do you, ha but they may well be in different coordinate reference systems. So sometimes you need to do conversions. We're definitely going to look at that um, later on in this course. So that's vector data. Um, raster data is the other type. It's comprised of pixels, which is um, a gridded sort of matrix of values. Um, and that's a discrete representation of the data. The data model for satellite data um, and remote sensing data, that's raster data typically. So when you get um, images from satellites, you're typically getting, let's say, raster data for that. But you can convert between the two. You can, you can take your vector data and make it a raster data set and vice versa. So a bit more detail about the vector data types. We have the point object, and these encode coordinate information about a single point. So typically we've seen latitude and longitude used a lot, I'm sure. Um, that describes a particular point on the Earth's surface. That's a point, and that's an example of a point. So when you're doing maps, you might have a point to represent, you know, a landmark, a famous statue, a football stadium, anything like that. A line, on the other hand, as I said earlier, it's a sequence of connected points, so with a line between them, that connects them in, a, in that graph-like structure, or, you know, basically you can think of that as a network. And the line uh, can be used, these line data uh, types can be used to represent rivers, road networks, um, aircraft, net, uh, the sort of paths that aircrafts take. Um, bike trails can be used to represent anything where you have these sort of continuous lines of data and they, f they often form these network data structures. Finally, uh, you have a polygon type and they represent areas, the boundaries of a lake, for example, the boundaries of a city. Um, I'm in Glasgow. You might have a boundary of, of, of your own city and that, that's very common in maps you'll have these polygon data structures or data types that show this is Glasgow, this is San Francisco, etc, etc. Now, these data types, they are available um, natively in the Shapely library. Now, GeoPandas is actually builds on top of Shapely. So Shapely is the dependency of GeoPandas. And um, when you have these geo, uh, geomet geometry columns in GeoPandas, they are actually building on top of Shapely. And finally, it's worth noting here um, that you can have multi lines, you can have multi points, multi, uh, multi polygons. And that's when you have a particular observation that's consisting of multiple 
points or multiple lines or multiple polygons. Um, but they just extend these, the, the, the three core types to understand are the, these top three here. So with that said, how do we actually get geospatial data? Um, how, how do we actually import it into libraries like GeoPandas? One of the ways we can do this is by using different, there are different file formats and different sources of data for this. Shape files are a very common one and these are actually a collection of files that describe locations, shape, attributes of uh, geographical features and these are vector file formats so it represents vector data. Secondly here we have uh, GeoJSON. Now JSON is an extremely common um, format for APIs and for encoding information. GeoJSON is a geographical extension that gives new types essentially to that, um, allowing you to create your points, your lines and your polygons. It's also a vector format. Another source that you might load in uh, geospatial data is from GIS databases. GIS stands for Geographical Information System and the one I like the most is called PostGIS which is an extension for PostgreSQL. Uh, PostgreSQL, uh, PostgreSQL is a very popular open source database and it has the spatial extension which is very good. But other databases like Oracle have the same, they have Oracle Spatial and there are other ones for MySQL and others. And I think these can store raster as well as vector data which is important to know. Um, OpenStreetMap um, is a very common open open a uh, API sort of mapping tool um, and you have these .osm files and these are also another quite common data format and there are many more, there are hundreds of these but these are the most common I would say, the, the ones that you really should know about. Um, so we're going to definitely encounter these in future lectures. So now we come to a brief intro to GeoPandas. So it extends on Pandas. Pandas is, is the most popular analytics library in Python and it has these two core built-in data structures called data frame and a series and GeoPandas essentially creates a geo series and a geo data frame. Now these are subclasses of the series and the data frame from Pandas. The geo series it represents a vector of geospatial objects. Okay, Each entry in the vector that's a set of shapes that correspond to a single observation so it might be points, multi-points, lines, multi-lines, polygons or multi-polygons. So if you had a set of landmarks for example in your in your data, if you were getting you know train stations, bus stations, football stadiums, car parks etc, you would be able to encode them in a geo series um, that represents where they are as point objects for example. Same if you had rivers, line objects, cities, polygons. Um, geo data frames are similar but they have additional columns that might not necessarily be um, might not necessarily be geometrical columns, ge geographical columns. And geo data frames they extend in the pandas data frame which is a, a tabular structure which contains columns and rows but there must be for a geo data frame to be valid there must be one geo series, essentially one column that has a geospatial data type. So that's the two main data types in um, GeoPandas. GeoSeries, which is a vector, and a GeoData frame, which is more like a, a matrix. And since these extend Pandas objects, everything that you can do with a Pandas series or a Pandas data frame, they also apply to a GeoData frame. That's very important because Pandas has a, a lot of brilliant tools for performing analytics. And we want to take the, the same tools and apply them to GeoPandas, and we can do that. This final slide here is just a quick note about what does GeoPandas depend upon. Obviously Pandas, which is the number one library for analytics, aggregation, windowing, data manipulation and cleaning in Python. NumPy, which is um, what Pandas itself is built on, um, it's a numerical computing library and allows you to perform very fast vectorized operations over um, large amounts of data. Shapely, that is um, a planar Cartesian 
XY sort of coordinate based manipulation library in Python um, and it allows you to manipulate and analyze geospatial objects. Fiona, that um, gives you a GDAL interface. Um, I think GDAL stands for the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. And so that allows you, Fiona gives you tools for IO basically, I think, um, allowing you to read and write from GIS data files. And finally, the, the final required dependency is one called PyProj. And that's for like, I think that stands for Python Projection. The key thing that that does is enable you to transform between one coordinate reference system and another. And so if you have data in different formats, sorry, data in different reference systems, but you want to bring them together, you might need to do that coordinate transformation. And PyProj provides the tools to do that. And GeoPandas exposes those tools in a very easy manner and allows you to do those transformations. And finally, we have optional dependencies. Depending on what you're doing, you might or might not need these. R-Tree, that's a spatial index for very fast spatial operations. You have um, specific extensions here for PostgreSQL and PostGIS. CyclePG is the PostgreSQL driver in Python and GeoAlchemy is like a, is similar to SQL Alchemy. It allows you to do geospatial operations on your database. GeoPy if you're doing geocoding and finally if you're doing any plotting which you probably will be you might need matplotlib um, or you will need matplotlib and you know that's a very common um, plotting library in Python and if you're using NumPy and pandas the chances are you're going to be using matplotlib as well or Seaborn um, which builds on top of matplotlib so that's optional but I would say you would pretty much always use that. There are also other libraries like Folium, which allows you to produce uh, interactive JavaScript maps. Um, Folium is a Python library, but um, it's an interface into a uh, leaflet.js basically. And it allows you to do mapping. Um, we're probably gonna use Folium as well as matplotlib for some plotting, but there are actually a lot of other tools we can use and we might explore some of them later on in the series. So that's all for now, that was a short introductory lecture to geospatial analysis and Python and GeoPandas. We'll get to more practical work in Jupyter Notebooks in future lectures, but for now that's all. Thank you for watching. Bye.